Hello, you're watching Hornbill TV. Well, for the past few years in our state, and in a very positive sign, Nagaland has been championing the cause of women empowerment. From sending its first woman representative to the parliament, Ms. Pangun Konyak, and also in addition to that, in the recently held 2023 elections, we saw two women entering the Nagaland Legislative Assembly for the first time in Nagaland's history. And now taking the women empowerment cause further and in another big achievement for uh, our state and, and also bringing laurels to the state. We, ha we are here today in the elite strength gym in KV Jao Colony. And we are here today with uh, an awardee who was recently just awarded the Women Leadership Award. And that award was uh, given on the 30th of March in Guwahati where Ms. Nithungono Achumi won the Women Leadership Award. And this award was given by the world Women uh, Leadership Congress, and it's quite a feat. Uh, Miss Nithungono won the award for contribution in as an athlete and as a coach. Well, she's also a fitness freak, and today we've got the opportunity to actually speak to ma'am and also like find out more about how she broke the barrier in a field where it is mostly dominated by men, and also how her journey began. So we'll try and get a glimpse as to how ma'am's journey also began into the fitness world, and also what. Uh, future is in store for all the women in Nagaland, f at least for those enthusiasts who are like, uh, who like to keep themselves healthy and fit. So first of all, ma'am, uh, thank you so much for giving us time at Onville TV. All right, ma'am, uh, you just received the World uh, Women Leadership uh, Award. Ma'am, how empowered and how motivated do you feel like, you know, when you are you, you're appreciated for something that you love doing? Firstly, I would like to thank Hornbill TV for having me here. Um, actually, you know, like this award uh, is a surprise for me because, you know, like there are so many other women who have achieved so much as compared to what I have achieved. You know, like for me, I don't uh, consider myself, you know, like I don't feel like I have achieved as yet, uh, so much as yet compared to them. So definitely, like, I was really happy I, uh, in the beginning of this year. The Women, World Women Leaders uh, Congress uh, leadership, uh, the executive director, Dr. Alok Pandit, he, he contacted me. He called me up and he said, you know, like, my name has been nominated. So they had asked me to send all materials, like my um, journey from fitness to my personal life, to all the links, interviews, my family, my friends, and all those materials I had to submit. So I submitted those things, and then there was a jury, a panel, or a council. So they had to scrutinize, you know, all those things, and you know, to give me the uh, to give me the award. So later on, I came to know that uh, Ma'am Rita Jairad, she's a very accomplished woman in our nation. She's uh, an IFBB pro athlete, as well as an IFBB uh, international judge, and also a TEDx speaker, and also a single mother. So I came to learn that, you know, she was the one who nominated me. And, you know, like I was so encouraged hearing that because she's a single mother and I'm sure she was able to relate to all the struggles, the battles, the responsibilities as we women face, you know, and especially in this sport where bodybuilding is considered to be a man's sport. So uh, I'm truly humbled for the award that has been bestowed on me. I remember, like, normally, like you had just mentioned, I mean, like, this bodybuilding sport is, uh, like, if you look at it generally, you know, it's all male dominated. So, ma'am, how did uh, your journey start? And when did you realize, like, okay, this is something, you know, that I am passionate about and I want to continue? So, ma'am, when did you, uh, like, realize, like, this fitness was your zone? Uh, actually, okay, so my journey started, I was in the teaching profession for almost a decade and then um, my husband was the one who taught me, introduced me to weightlifting. So we started out, you know, working out at home, home workouts, 
and he taught me the techniques, the right form and the right technique. And then later on got me admitted into a gym and where, you know, I started working out, seeing my body changing, transforming. And that is how, you know, like, uh, I got motivated, you know, like, you know, I just started uh, loving this sport and I, I kept, you know, this thing was in my heart. One day, if I get an uh, opportunity or a platform, I would like to compete. So, uh, you know, that's how it started. And then um, my first competition was held in Guwahati, 2018, Northeast. Uh, so I won gold there. And, you know, I just competed, you know, for experience. And uh, to my surprise, I won gold. Then the second competition was, you know, straight to amateur Olympia, where I, I had no mentors, you know, the little knowledge that me and my husband, we had, you know, we just put it together, you know, I, we didn't know much about diet, nutrition, and, you know, especially like when it comes to this sport, you know, your, the nutrition, the diet is like totally different. The diet is extreme because this bodybuilding sport is considered to be an extreme sport. So the diet is extreme, you know. So we just, you know, did whatever we could and, you know, I competed. But uh, during that year at Amateur Olympia, that was in 2018, uh, I, I, did, I made it to the finals. And I was the only woman from Northeast. And then I made it to the finals, but uh, I could not get a placing there. But I came back with lots of experience, you know, and then I learned so much, you know, from my mistakes. And then, um, you know, after that, after that experience on Amateur Olympia stage, you know, uh, I, you know, like my whole, uh, this thing was just on, um, you know, I wanted to step on stage again, you know, better uh, from all the experiences that I uh, got, you know, like I just wanted to, compete again. So that is how my journey started. And then uh, I realized, you know, me and my husband, we realized that to go to another level, I need uh, to get a coach. I need a coach. So uh, I got a coach and, you know, like for a few years, uh, I wanted to compete, but since the pandemic hit, so just going on with the home workouts and uh, all that. But later on, uh, I got a coach and, you know, that is how Mm, that is how I am here right now. So, ma'am, uh, like coming back to uh, like, see, normally there's a saying behind every successful man, there is a woman behind him. So, as for your case, behind a successful woman, who has been that one person that you know you want to thank for your growth in this particular field? And also, ma'am, do you have any celebrity role role model that you look up to? So, for me, you know, uh, behind my success or I don't consider myself a success yet, but still, you know, whatever I have achieved, first thing, you know, I would say is because of God's grace and his mercy and his favor upon my life, making, uh, you know, bringing the right people into my life, connecting me with the right people. But apart from, you know, like God, like it has been my husband. My husband was the one who has always supported me from day one. He has been, you know, like uh, helping me in everything, you know, like he's always there with me. Everywhere I go, you know, we do it together. So, you know, like whatever I've achieved so far, it is because of my husband, because of his support uh, and his encouragement. And if you were to ask me like my celebrity role model in India, then I would say Ma'am Rita Jairad. She's a single mother, so accomplished, and uh, they are the torch barriers, especially in this field. Uh, you know, she's accomplished, like, not only in this field, but even in so many, uh, not only in sports, but, you know, in so many uh, areas, like business and everything, being a single mother. And um, so I think Ma'am Rita Jairad, she's my role model. Uh, you know, and apart from Ma'am Rita Jairad, I would say like Sir Hemant, uh, Hemant. He's the, they are in this fitness industry for a very long time. And they are the ones who have provided a platform for all the athletes, you know, in Nag uh, not only from Naglin, but uh, India and international platform they have provided for uh, athletes like us. So, you know, 
they are the they are my role models. If you were to ask. All right, ma'am. Uh, you were just talking about uh, your role model, who is a single mother. Well, most of the viewers won't realize that, uh, ma'am. You are a mother too. You've got uh, a daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I have a daughter and a son. Yes. So, ma'am, I mean, like in your field, especially in this, uh, the field that you have taken up, consistency and discipline is a very important yes. facet of your field. So, how do you balance uh, motherhood and also keeping in shape, like like you are today? Um, like you said, you know the. There is no secret formula, you know, like uh, work hard, be consistent, be disciplined. This tree has always worked from before. And it, uh, there's, like I said, there's no secret formula. So you just have to work hard, you have to be disciplined, you have to be consistent. So um, for me, you know, like um, this is what I do, you know, this is what I'm good at. And uh, if you were to ask like an IS officer or someone like, how did they get there? You know, I'm sure they have spent hours of uh, studying and coaching and you know, so there are sacrifices that they have to make, they prioritize. So, and I will not be able to do what they are able to do. And if you look from their point of view at my uh, condition, they would say like they will never be able to do what I'm able to do. So we all have our own strengths, you know, and weaknesses. So um, for me, you know, of course I'm a mother. I make sure like I try to do my mom duties as well as wife duties, but this is something I'm good at. And you know, like it has become a part, it has become like a part of me, you know, like one day if I don't work out, I feel like, you know, like <laughs> I feel like something is missing, you know, like my day is not complete. So. So that's just, you know, this is what I do and this is what I'm good at and I've been doing this for over a decade now. So, you know, like I just prioritize and uh, I manage my time accordingly. All right, uh, another important facet in your field is also, ma'am, uh, it's a diet is also very important. Yes. Now, as a mother who's cooking for her children, I mean, like, do you sometimes wish you could eat the food that you serve your children? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, you know, like, especially like when I'm in my off season where people call off season, but I would say not off season because even during off season, I'm not off, you know, like I'm in my improvement season. So I'd like to call it improvement season. So even during my improvement season, of course, you know, my calories are up and, you know, I can eat more. But uh, yes, I have my... Um, you know, I, you know, I'm a human being, you know, like I cheat on my diet sometimes, <laughs> but uh, it's it, actually, it's not, uh, you know, like it's not hard. It's not hard to follow a diet once you, once you do it, you know, like once you do it, actually, it's not really hard. And of course I get cravings like every other people, you know, and uh, I make sure, you know, like I, keep those cravings, you know, for the weekends or, or it's not like every weekend I'm cheating on my diet or having a cheat meal, you know, but I try to save it, save those things up because food will always be there. Food is not going anywhere. Food will always be there, especially during prep times. Improvement season, of course, we are eating, but when you're on prep, then the food is very diet, uh, very strict. Sorry. The food is very strict. Diet is very strict. So, um, I tell myself every time I get a craving, you know, like when I go through Instagram, I see all these food pictures and videos and, you know, like I'm human being, you know, I want to eat and all that. But I, I look uh, for the medal or for whatever I'm working ahead. And, you know, like I tell myself, you know, this food is not going anywhere. I'm I will be able to eat as much food as possible after my competition is over, you know, after I have achieved my goal. So that keeps me motivated, you know, to stick to my diet. Uh, also, ma'am, coming back to that point in which, like, uh, it's a general perception that, you know, this bodybuilding, uh, this whole sector is male dominated. So, ma'am, how was it like breaking the barrier? I mean, like, you know, getting into a field where, like, basically half of it is men. So how was it breaking the barrier and was it difficult and also like, uh, is it possible to actually break that bar barrier and achieve what you have achieved? Um, actually, yes. Initially, when I started uh, my journey, 
uh, you know, like, especially like in a place like Naglan, which is like, we are like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years behind compared to other states, uh, especially in the fitness industry I'm saying, talking about. So, um, you know, like, it, it was, it, it is hard and maybe I've not reached there yet, but um, breaking down walls because it is not normal, you know, in our tradition to see a woman wearing a competition suit, which is a bikini and standing there on stage, you know. People have their own opinions, uh, so people have things to say. But uh, initially, you know, like when I started and, you know, I hear people uh, talking and, uh, pointing fingers and all, I, I get, you know, it affects me, it affected me, but not anymore, you know, like, uh, I think I have broken down some walls and, you know, like, I feel like that, you know, because no matter what people say or uh, perceive, you know, like, about me, uh, I don't, it doesn't affect me anymore, you know, because I know who I am, I know my words, and when I'm up there on stage competing, wearing a two-piece competition suit, you know, the judges are not looking at me and thinking, oh, she's hot, you know, she's got a, a good uh, booty or, she, you know, they are not judging me according to that. They are looking at my body proportions, my muscle uh, maturity and other things, you know, so they are not looking and judging at me in that criteria at all. So, um, so I would say like in Naglan, this is still very new, but uh, I'm also happy that, you know, last year our, we had the first NPC Naglan Championship, which was held in Christian Higher Secondary School. So there were four female uh, bikini athletes, like uh, from Naglan who competed. And so we are slowly, slowly, you know, like starting to uh, break barriers and the ladies here in Naglin are slowly, slowly getting more confident, you know. And uh, <clears throat> this year we are having another show, second NPC show, which is on the 22nd of April, which will be held in Holy Cross Auditorium. So we have already like um, three to four, or I don't know, like maybe five, because some girls are training under me right now for that competition. So, and we have so many athletes coming from Meghalaya, from Assam also, you know, to compete. So I think, you know, like, um, slowly, slowly, you know, the girls are getting more confident. And um, of course, for me, like, it has been a journey. And now, you know, if you ask me, like, I'm just happy, you know, that uh, I've been given the right platform. And if you go out of Naglin and compete in other places, you will see a lot of women, you know, like breaking barriers, you know, and, and their husbands, their family are their supporters. They are supporting what they do, you know. So uh, in Naglin, it's very uh, few, but you, when you go out of Naglin, you will see like so many women and most of them are like married and mothers, you know, so uh, I think slowly, slowly, you know, like there are women coming up from Naglin also. And uh, of course, I had my own uh, experience and journey in this field. Uh, but now, you know, uh, where bodybuilding is considered as a man's sport, um, I think women, women are stepping up and there are a lot of women athletes too in this field. Or uh, another uh, trend that we are seeing in Naglin is like, yes. yeah, if you look back over the past three, four years, mm. if you go, like, you're, if you're traveling in Dimapur itself, uh, you go to different colonies, you've, you, we've, we are seeing like a lot of new gyms are being built, new yes. gyms, the Nagas are getting conscious about, you know, staying fit. Yes. And, but then like with the increase in the number of gyms, also another alarming uh, situation is happening, which is the use of supplements and steroids and all that. So. Ma'am, like how dangerous are these supplements and also like, you know, is it, nowadays we see a lot of supplements being sold online. Yes. So are these like legit and also like, do you need professional advice when you take certain supplements? Um, okay, so yes, supplements are very important, especially in this field, but of course there are a lot of fake supplements too on the, uh, in the market. 80% of the supplements that you get online are fake. So if you're making a purchase, it's good to make a purchase on verified supplements, supplements that are verified. Uh, 
one supplement uh, brand that I would suggest is Strong Nation. It's verified, it's good. I take uh, Strong Nation supplements, they are really good. So one suggestion is that. And I would not name any supplements that that supplement brand, uh, you know, that that supplement is bad, that, that is not good, you know. You just do that, uh, you know, do the research yourself, do the study yourself. But uh, Strong Nation is one, it is verified, it is really good. And yes, and uh, regarding steroid use, PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, um, what you say it is very true, you know, like uh, it is dangerous, uh, you know, like you should uh, you should consult a coach uh, if you want to take uh, PEDs or steroids. You you can't just you know take uh, you can't just take it like that. It will harm your body. So uh, I even for me personally, I have seen a lot of uh, people you know, especially young people you know, tar starting to take uh, PEDs, which is really not good. Steroids, which is really not good. You know, like so. We are living in a uh, time and generation where everything, you know, like we want it fast, fast, fast food, fast that, so, you know, fast results. You want to see fast results, so, you know, they start taking all that. But you have to think about, you know, five, ten years ahead from now. So it is always good to uh, refer to a coach, take his advice, and then, uh, and I'm not talking about just any coach, you know, so a coach who's well educated in that area, and then take his uh, advice because it is really dangerous. All right, uh, apart from um, now moving on to like an issue like of basically a very general issue. Uh, just recently, the International Olympic Committee uh, yes. has banned uh, transgenders from participating in women events. Yes. Now, ma'am, in your personal opinion, uh, do you think it's fair that a transgender is allowed to actually participate in a women event? I mean, like, especially for you, I mean, you are in the bodybuilding uh, sector. Out there, uh, it's all about muscles and the yes. tone. So do you think it'll be fair if you have a transgender competing against <laughs> you? <laughs> so, see, like, we all have our own opinions. And since you asked for my opinion, for me, I do not encourage. I do not encourage. And I think that is not fair, you know, a transgender competing in a woman's uh, category or, you know, uh, event. Uh, I think that is totally not fair. If a transgender was allowed to compete in my field, a bodybuilding, bikini category, you know, men have, uh, naturally, men have more, uh, you know, their testosterone level is more. So they build muscle more faster, at a faster rate compared to a woman. So definitely, no, I don't agree a transgender competing in a woman, uh, uh, woman event. All right, ma'am, uh, there will be a lot of viewers out there like who also would be, you know, like passionate about like entering this field, uh, yes. this bodybuilding field. So, ma'am, what would your subtle message be to all those, uh, w those girls watching you at the moment? Like what, if there was one advice you could give, what would that be for those girls like who are interested but are finding it difficult to come and open up? Okay, one advice that I would give uh, for any ladies, you know, wanting to step on this stage or in this field is like, you know, just just follow your dreams. Be hard, work hard, be consistent, uh, be disciplined, and it will take time, you know, like, but if you're consistent, if you're hardworking, if you're disciplined, you know, it will, you will, you will, go far. So um, one message I would give them is, you know, just follow your heart. Don't, don't listen to people, you know, like talking because when I, from my experience, I'm saying because when I first started in this uh, fitness, in my journey, in this field, um, there were a lot of people talking and, you know, like doubts and I did not have an answer that time, you know, like, and but I did not have an answer to give back to them during that time. You know, some, there were some people like, yeah, what will you do? You know, like, yeah, we have no scope here. Like, you know, like all those things. But, and I did not have an answer to give back, you know, but uh, 
I'm not saying I'm super accomplished or anything right now, but whatever I have achieved so far and wherever I have reached, there are a lot of people who I'm thankful for. You know, countless people, Emi Toli, Sir Tovi Hoto, who have uh, helped me financially, my family members, my husband's family members, who have, um, you know, given me financial support plus moral su support. And, you know, there are countless people, you know, so, you know, like, just follow your heart, do what you're passionate about, uh, be hardworking, be disciplined and be consistent. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving us your time at Hornville TV and all the best in your future endeavors. I think NPC, uh, that is going to happen in April yes, 22nd yes. is your next uh, target. So all the best for that, ma'am. Thank you and so much. And we hope that you will keep bringing laurels and we hope that through this interview, I think, you know, if uh, you could motivate even one or two girls. I think that would have been a great success. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Well, that was uh, Miss Nithungono, who had just won the Women Leadership Award. And this award was given by the Women Leadership Congress. And uh, she received that award this year for her contribution in the field of as an athlete and as a coach. Well, we just heard ma'am's story. And uh, it's pretty uh, empowering to know that as a mother and as an athlete too, she's been able to find a thin line of balance between motherhood and also following her passion and through this interview we have also realized like uh, no matter when you start your journey there might be a lot of shortcomings but if you stay focused and if you stay consistent and disciplined and forget about what people are talking about i think you will reach to the status that ma'am has reached up to now and it's even more uh, enriching and you know uh, appreciating to know that uh, ma'am is now also coaching uh, so many girls under her guidance and as a mentor and we hope that more women will open up to their passion and to their hearts and follow what they want to actually follow with the full passion and dedication that they have. So for this uh, special interview, we were here in KV Jao Colony with camera person Joy. I'm Mark Vito, signing off for Hornville TV.